Right now, Tropical Storm Ian is strengthening in the Caribbean and is forecast to batter Florida as a major hurricane next week. A hurricane barreling toward Florida, declaring a state of emergency for all 67 counties and activating thousands of National Guardsmen. But not do it too early in case there's a last minute shift in the storm's track, as we have seen in recent years with examples like megastorms. You're living a dream, you know? You're like, there's no way that ocean's coming up into my living room. We went to ground zero on Florida's southwest coast, where Ian first roared ashore and where the hurricane's fury was most severe. As Hurricane Ian's violence bore down on Sanibel Island, a neighboring communities struggle with Ian's aftermath, the deadliest hurricane since Katrina. The Sanibel Causeway been here 30 years and it's weathered many, many storms and hurricanes, and this has never happened. It's impressive to see. I mean, they've already got cranes out here. They've got trucks, heavy equipment, already doing what they can to try to open up some kind of road between Sanibel and the mainland. We understand that the plans, emergency plans, have already been pretty much put together. The state came down to help Lee County do that, but you can see where the island just, the man-made islands just washed away. The Sanibel uh, Causeway was breached in five different places. So not only did the man-made islands wash away, but the road and the bridge itself in five different places. And what I didn't realize was all of the islands are breached, not just one. So there's five different areas where the causeway crumbled. This is the South Seas Resort on the very northern tip of Captiva Island. Great place for a staycation. And uh, you see a lot of roof damage here, but the buildings are still standing. So it was a much different story after Hurricane Charlie. South Seas was pretty much flattened during Hurricane Charlie. And uh, it's a different story now. A lot of the, the buildings are still standing at South Seas. The moment we leave Summerlin Road and enter the causeway to the islands, you begin to see the aftermath of Hurricane Ian from September of 2022. The beautiful public beaches on either side of the road are now under heavy repair and construction. The old public beach area crossing the last causeway into Sanibel. We begin to see the Hole the hurricane has taken on the island. island cow. The island cow. Island cow no the bike trail is open. This is the area completely green last year where the reserve is where we could only see greens on both sides and now we can get to see the homes. The uprooted trees, of course, die and eventually dry out. Some not super untouched. Yeah. And others? Level. Pero esta, todo esto son casas que we were never able to see. 
okay, now we're, we're gonna get on the road. Now you're gonna have the more commercial stuff on the right and the beach on the left. No, this, this doesn't look too bad. Now we're about to enter South Seas Resort, so we'll see what happens here. I mean, beach villas? No, they're fine. No, they look fine. After Hurricane Charlie. In 2005, I could see across to the water. Yeah, these are the beach cottages. Beach cottages. That pool, someone was laying out in there. Really? Yeah, I just saw her. Okay. Laying out. This is the first set of homes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you can see some oh, of them. Yeah. You can see some of the bay. You see? Oh, the burning roof. Yeah, right there. Well, in 2005, this road was blocked by a chain link fence. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Yeah. Oh, through the... Go through the, to the access, remember? Yeah. Yeah. I think they gave up on blocking this. With many of the homes in different stages of repair, nature is making a comeback and we can see the bare trees getting full of new leaves and wildlife. Christy found a new young turtle making its way around. Good morning. Moviéndome las hojas de mi, las orejas de mi abuelo que se me queman en la punta. Y el viejito que te decía. La caseta, la caseta. Versalles. The public beach area is sealed off, uh, getting renovated. The explorers. 
This used to be the famous Captiva golf course, which is now essentially a sandy desert. Okay, this is the north end of Captiva where the pier is. And it's right now blocked to traffic. And there's construction and repairs going on here. The marina villas uh, seem to be okay. And here's the marina, it's beautiful, very calm, very quiet. The old Captain Al's, now Harborside restaurant. Seems in good shape, but it's closed, of course. The original Plantation House Hotel closed and undergoing repair. The golf course and the Lands End Village are blocked off and unaccessible. The units are undergoing extensive repair and there's no access to the area. Across the uh, water is North Captiva, which with all the bare trees makes it easier to visualize all of the beautiful homes on that island. And one thing that is resilient and remains generation after generation are the Land's End rocks where many, many family photos have been taken. And of course, Captiva's signature sunsets are still here to enjoy. A bird's nesting reserve uh, is being enforced and an area has been blocked off to pedestrians. And of course the birds are keeping watch and protecting their territory. And one of them became a little bit defensive with me. Shadow walking on Captiva Beach. Glorious, glorious third sunset. Yes, glorious. And now, time for a little sunset swim. Yeah. <laughs> 